Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, really appreciate you guys uh, coming out this afternoon. And um, so we're going to talk about uh, the studio that we started. Uh, we began eight months ago, and we build interactive installations. So we use sound, light, and motion to create immersive experiences in spaces for brands and events and companies. And um, we sort of just got into it because it was something we wanted to do. Uh, Dave was in acoustics and architecture. I was doing music production and audio restoration. And uh, we quit our jobs and we said, let's go for it. Um, and this is sort of what we've been doing for the past eight months. Um, so we found that uh, from the time that we started completing our jobs, there's been some consistencies in the reactions that we've gotten to the projects that we've done. Um, so you know, these are just some patterns that we found. So professional. This is really what the, we should we should clarify. This is what other people have said about us. <laughs> professional. Professional. Yes. Expert. You don't say them together. Masterfully, Masterfully artistic. artistic. Genius. Genius. Magic. Magic. Wow. Um, if you asked us how we felt about our work and how the process is of building these things. That's, say, kind of, that's an image of kind of what it feels like. <laughs> yes, we would say, ah, what, what have we done? What are we doing? We're completely screwed. We're screwed. Uh, what is the burning smell <laughs> coming from the electronics? Um, and it hurts so much. When does it end? Um, yeah. So I think there's, there's sort of these two perspectives that you have. When you're in it, when you're the person making it, when you decided to just jump in with your eyes closed, and then the outside perspective, which is like, wow, these people are incredible. And this is sort of our story about what that's like. So we're going to go through three projects of ours that we've completed over the last couple of months, actually. Um, we're going to show you the kind of outside perspective, the kind of documentation that we've put together for it, the kind of like nicer, polished, forward-facing part of the project. And then we're going to give you some behind the scenes and tell you about a little bit what the process was like. So I think we'll dive straight into the videos and then we'll explain a little bit of what the projects were. This was a project that we did for a client, um, a recording studio client actually, called Ant Food Music and Sound Design. Uh, this is a recording studio in Brooklyn, and they have that long hallway that you saw that connects all their different spaces in their studio. And they came to us and said, can you make us a really cool sound and light piece, chandelier, sculpture, whatever you want to make. Um, so Gabe and I, and then two other collaborators, Kevin Seawaff and Zach Dunham, uh, designed this piece, we built this piece, and we installed this piece as well. And so here's just a little bit of process photos. We built this. You might think we have some big, beautiful, uh, warehousey workshop with all the latest tools, and, and, and we don't. We have a basement. We have a friend of ours' basement, <laughs> luckily enough, that was about a block away from the studio, so it made it pretty easy to, to make the piece here, and then actually we walked it over one by one. <laughs> um, here's some process photos. This is Elizabeth under the thing as we staged it in the basement. Um, I think we have, did we already play the GIF? Uh, that is here, I believe. Yeah, so this gives you an idea. We, we hand soldered every single one of those lights. There's about 1,200 of them in the piece. Um, they're custom designed PCBs or printed circuit boards that house the LEDs. We wrote all the software. We did everything on this project. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning, this one went pretty well. Not a whole lot of stress in terms of things going bad, but things always do go bad. I think everybody should realize that nothing is perfect. And on this particular job, 
I think if we scroll down a couple of photos, um, we, had, we had a pretty fun situation with this little thing. So this is um, called an FPGA. It's, it's one of the components that goes, that takes the computer data and then sends it out to the lights the way that we want it to. Um, and maybe Gabe, you can talk a little bit more about what this particular one this is. This is an like essential special. piece of the project. <laughs> it's the linchpin of the entire thing. And we bought it from a guy called Ron, and his website is called ronsholidaylights.com. He's from the um, Christmas light community, which uh, I really can now recommend to you guys. There's uh, really wonderful message boards. He's a retired electronic engineer in California. Um, so we relied heavily on this one dude in his living room building this incredibly important piece. So we ordered one. Um, the night before install, I plugged in the wrong cable to it and I burned the whole thing out. Um, so we weren't going to be able to bring it to the studio the next day. So I emailed him and I said, Ron, I burned your board out. What am I going to do? He said, Gabe, I'm in Newark. Just bring it to me. So I, I drove my car to him at 2 a.m. and I handed it off to him and then he overnighted me, the fixed one, the next day. Uh, and it was horrifying. Um, so <laughs> um, this is sort of the, the troubles you get into when you're working on budgets, when you're sort of just going for it. That's right. We should clarify. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're not a massive studio. We don't have yeah. massive clients with millions of dollars. You know, so we build what we can, and, and we hope that what we design and what we make makes you think that it's very expensive and makes you think that we have <laughs> that warehouse that's beautiful. But really, you know, at the moment at least, because we're brand new, we're relying on at the, you know, the Christmas lights community, which is <laughs> wonderful. It completely works, except <laughs> things go wrong. Um, so we had a little bit of a freak out moment, um, but instead of you know, lying down and dying, we said, Let's, we have to get through this. We have to install at least in the next couple of days, and then we did. And luckily, you know, like Gabe said, Ron was around miraculously. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about the next one. Sure. Right? Okay, so here we go. Say it! Say it! Um, right, so this was a piece <laughs> that we made for um, a festival in Washington, D.C. Um, it was called the Prava Light and Art Festival. Okay. So um, we had a friend named Emily Baltz. She's a food artist. She invited Dave and I to come down and uh, produce this piece with her. And she said, hey, guys, I'm going to get 1,200 pounds of ice, and uh, we should do a project together. And we're like, that's great. Um, and we didn't plan it at all. So we woke up that morning and got in a van in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Um, and then we were like, so what is this ice piece that we're going to be doing today, Dave? Uh, and um, we brought some sensors. We knew that we wanted it to be touch reactive. Um, and we knew we wanted it to make sound. We weren't really sure. And we were kind of going back and forth in the van. And we were playing like string samples, maybe like piano riffs and stuff like this. And then I found the folder of like this gospel funk dude. And uh, he beautiful, was just going, beautiful, yeah, sounds. exuberant, um, expressive, wonderful. And I just found, like, it, it, it was obviously the choice for these ice blocks, the personalities that you would sort of conjure when you touch these things. Um, so we're just like, let's do it. And then we got down there. We got there um, at 4 p.m., uh, around 4 p.m. Right. The festival was meant to open up at 6 o'clock. We should say... Um, it wasn't because we sat on this project that nothing happened. It was because we got invited very, very last minute. Um, and so we didn't really know what the festival was. We didn't know how many people were going to be there. It turned out there were 3,000 people <laughs> that came in and out of this place. Um, it was open for eight hours. We had two hours to get set up with a project that we had never really prototyped or done. And so we had some capacitive sensors. Uh, you, you hopefully noticed that when you touched the ice, you would get the ice to play music or to play these sounds. Um, but the capacitive sensor that we were planning on using actually didn't work. Um, and 
we think it's probably because we were trying to put it in ice and nobody really puts capacitive sensors in ice. Um, it so we ended like up, idea. you know, yeah. it, around 4.30, 5 o'clock realizing we don't, we can't make this thing that we thought we could make, at least the way that we thought we were going to. Um, but luckily we brought a bunch of other stuff. We had something called a Makey Makey um, that actually relies on your being grounded and then pressing the ice as well, uh, which ended up working really, really well. Um, but what we didn't have was a good way to ground the people because we didn't, we hadn't designed like a metal plate all the way around the ice so that you could separate the ice and the ground. So what, what we ended up using was solder. So if you don't, if you don't know, solder um, is, you know, the little metallic kind of string that you heat up when you make electronic parts. Um, and so we had a whole lot of solder around and it's, it's conductive. So we literally taped solder around the edges of the ice and just asked people to touch that and then touch the ice and it worked out completely well. I think you can maybe see some of the photos. Um, this is something that, you know, in our mind, if we were designing this a week before and someone said, why don't you just use solder, why don't you just tape down some solder, we'd say, you're crazy. We would never do that. That would look terrible. Nobody would want to do it. That sounds like a really bad idea. But in the moment when things go wrong and, and when you have to just react, um, this is what happened, and it worked completely perfectly. And it mm -hmm. was a small part that, yes, it could have been better, but the overall experience was really the part that was important. And 3,000 people came through this thing and loved it. It was very, very successful, and it was really fun, which is what we try to do in our work. Mm -hmm. Um, so the last project we want to show you is the largest thing we've done so far. This was a piece for Red Bull Studios in New York City, and it, they came to us, or they came to our collaborator, James DeVito, um, and said, we'd like to do this big screen, you know, out of LEDs. <clears throat> Can you do it? And this, similar to the, to the DC project, was on a really compressed time scale. We didn't have a whole lot of uh, leeway in terms of, like, we have two months to do this. We had less than two weeks to do this, and from design to fabrication to build, to install. And this one, um, compared to that ant food project that had about 1,200 LEDs in it, this one has 25,000 LEDs in it. And the same basement that we made uh, ant food in, we made this in, actually. Um, we should show you some of these photos. So this was a little bit of a grueling process, uh, mostly because of the, the time. And I think one thing we should also, <laughs> here's some, some photos of us not being very awake. Um, <laughs> There's our collaborator, James, laying out with it. Um, I think one thing we learned from this is scale uh, is really important. You know, and when we're designing this and when we're thinking about it when it's just on paper, it seemed really doable and we, yeah, we can actually do this. We, we will do it relatively comfortably. Um, but once we realized the, once we started making it, we were milling, we were CNC milling the pieces. There's 12 pieces. And then once we're epoxying all of the LEDs on there, once we're programming the entire piece, you start to realize, wow, this is actually quite a large scale. Even in the video, I think um, you don't get the same sense of scale as you do here when we have it laid out on the ground at Red Bull. Um, I think another interesting thing about this is our, our basement space, our borrowed basement space, wasn't even big enough to lay this out. So we just crossed our fingers that we did all the milling correctly. Nobody got like one side mixed up with another or anything like that. And the first time we actually laid it out and plugged it all in together was at the venue about a day before we put it up. <laughs> um, and then we had a huge hiccup uh, that 
maybe you want to talk about it. Yeah, um, we said yes to this project two weeks before, and we had you know one day to kind of go and measure the window that it was going to be mounted in. And because of the fact that it was above a spiral staircase, we couldn't actually get to the inside to measure the window. They said, it's totally fine. Just measure it from the outside. The mullions, uh, the, the frame of the window, is the same the inside and the outside. So we went with that when we milled and built the entire piece over seven or eight incredibly grueling days. So it was the night before install. We're there. Uh, Dave is up on a cherry picker, I believe. For um, like 14 hours For 14 time. hours. And he brings the first panel up to hang it, and we realize that the piece is three inches too big for the window. And too it will long. not fit. So, so it's, not, it's not too short, like it would still fit. It's too long, and it won't fit. And, it, and we're about 14 hours before opening. Before the opening, and we have not slept, <laughs> and we were uh, basically crying. Um, but it was, it was sort of this moment where um, we kind of had to say, well, either we're just going to pack up and go, or we're going to take this down and fix it. So what we did was we cut the top three inches off of our video wall, Literally. which meant that we had to re-solder all of the LEDs on the top panels, which meant we had to then reprogram all of our software and then glue this thing all back together to then get back up on the cherry picker to hang it in time for the opening. Um, which and we did. We did it. So, yeah. thank yes. You. Thank you. And I'll say, you know, there, there, was, there, were, there were like maybe one or two other easier ways out. You know, the, the material that we used is really lightweight, and that was on purpose, um, in that it can flex. And so we talked with the client, and we said, you know, it, it, yeah. mind you, it's somewhere between 2 and 3 a.m. We said, we can bend this back, and it will look like a mistake, or it will not kind of look right, or we can do it right, which means we have, you know, another, another however many hours worth of work. And they kind of looked at us like, well, it's your call. What are you going to do? And we said, we're going to do it right. And there was a moment in their eyes that was like, yes, I completely trust you now. And I think it's those kind of moments that, you know, whether you walk away, whether you take the easy way out, or if you do it right, it's that kind of moment that we're going to get called back from these people. I think it's really important. So I think, yeah, oh, no, we should wrap it up. So th the whole point of our showing you this and not just showing you the glitzy, glamoury part, but showing you that part and also, you know, some of the stories behind it is just to say that, you know, nearly nothing is perfect in life in general. And you can have your own assumptions about the way the world works. You can have your assumptions about the way our studio works, that we have the big, beautiful warehouse with the best tools, with the best projects and all of that. And that's something that we can push out into the world, but the, the reality is that it's, it's not the way it works, and neither does anything else. Um, and so, given the theme of this event, we just wanted to say that nobody should let the without, the no, the no resources, the no experience, the you've never done it before, don't let the without stop the within from coming out and actually creating it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.